In previous videos, we've learned that we can take glucose and other carbohydrates and oxidize them through glycolysis and the Krebs cycle. And we know when we take carbohydrates like glucose and oxidize them through glycolysis and the Krebs cycle, we create these reduced cofactors. And we know these reduced cofactors can be used to fuel the electron transfer chain to create ATP. So that's the way we can take carbohydrates and oxidize them to create ATP. But we can do the same thing with free fatty acids. We can take this free fatty acid and oxidize it to create ATP through a process known as beta oxidation. So the way we do this is we take the free fatty acid and we go through one round of beta oxidation. And with each round of beta oxidation, we create one FADH2 and one NADH. So then we do another round of beta oxidation and we create more of these reduced cofactors. Then we do another round and create more of these reduced cofactors. And something important to realize is with each round of beta oxidation, we lose carbons. We lose two carbons in the form of acetyl-CoA. Then we do another round of beta oxidation and lose two more carbons in the form of acetyl-CoA. But the point is, as we keep on doing beta oxidation, rounds of beta oxidation, oxidizing this free fatty acid, as we keep doing beta oxidation, we create these reduced cofactors, which can fuel the electron transfer chain to create ATP. So that's a way we can oxidize fat to create ATP. And if you're curious on the exact mechanism, first we take the free fatty acid and we activate it by reacting it with an ATP and a CoA. But essentially we activate it, forming this compound. Now we're ready to go through beta oxidation to create ATP. So what's the first step? First, we essentially, we see these hydrogens. We essentially react them with one of these FADs. So this FAD reacts, stealing those hydrogens and those electrons. And when we do that, we produce an FADH2. And as we stole those electrons, we created this double bond. So now we've created one of these reduced cofactors. So that's the first step. Now we just could do a simple uh, addition reaction where we have this double bond so we can uh, simply add a water through a, an addition reaction. And if and again, this is just basic organic chemistry where again, we know these pi bonds s attack the hydrogen, then we create a carbocation where this oxygen attacks. But the point is, it's just a simple addition and now we have a hydroxyl. Now, once we have the hydroxyl, we can create one of the, we can use one of these NADs to react, essentially stealing more hydrogens. And when this NAD steals more hydrogens, it produces an FADH. And as we stole the hydrogens, we've created one of these carbonyls. But now we've created our second reduced cofactor. So that's good. So now we've created our, our cof reduced cofactors. But now what do we do? Well, now we take one of these coas and essentially we go through a reaction where we deprotonate this, this sulfur. So now we have the sulfur nucleophile and we essentially go through a reaction where we form a bond and we break a bond where these electrons fall in the co this, this, this carbon. And the exact mechanism is again, we nucleophilically attack. When we attack, we form a bond. And once we form that bond, we push these pi electrons up on the oxygen. So when we do that, we form this tetrahedral intermediate. We formed a bond and push those electrons up. Now what happens is the electrons scooch back down forming a double bond, and when that happens, now this bond breaks and these electrons fall in the carbon. And when we do that, we form this structure. So we've done it. Remember what we were doing. We form a bond and break a bond and these electrons fall in the carbon. So we form a bond and break a bond. And then again, this carbon would get protonated and, and now we've done it. So now we've gone through a round of beta oxidation. Remember, we, we've created these reduced cofactors, and we lost carbons in the form of acetyl-CoA, so that we've gone through a round of beta oxidation. And now we can go through another round, creating, losing more carbons in acetyl-CoA and creating more reduced cofactors. And then we do another round, and et cetera, and we keep on doing rounds of beta oxidation, keep on losing carbons and creating these reduced cofactors. So as we go through beta oxidation and oxidize this fatty acid, we create these reduced cofactors, which we know fuel the electron transport chain and be, can be used to create ATP. So this is a way we can take fat, oxidize it to create ATP. And if you're curious on the context of when our body's doing beta oxidation, well, we know in our bloodstream, we have glucose in our bloodstream. And it's important to make sure we have glucose in our bloodstream to keep our brain happy. Our brain requires glucose for it to function properly and it gets its glucose from the blood. But what happens if we haven't eaten a meal for a couple of hours? Then our blood glucose concentrations drop and that's dangerous and, and now the, that's dangerous for the brain because now it doesn't have a source of energy. So essentially what happens is the pancreas senses that the glucose concentrations have dropped and that's bad. So in response, it releases glucagon. That glucagon tells the liver to go through gluconeogenesis, to use non-carbohydrate precursors as a source of carbons to create glucose molecules. So glucagon tells the liver to go through gluconeogenesis to buy 
biosynthesize these glucose molecules, so now we can dump those glucose molecules in the bloodstream to keep the brain happy. But this process of gluconeogenesis requires a lot of ATP. This is an anabolic process which requires a lot of ATP. Where do we get that ATP? Well, again, that glucagon also tells the adipocytes to hydrolyze these bonds, go through a process known as lipolysis, to essentially hydrolyze these these bond, these ester bonds to release those free fatty acids, which can be sent to the liver mitochondria. Now, when those free fatty acids enter the mitochondria in the liver, the hepatocytes in the liver, now those, those free fatty acids can, now this is when beta oxidation occurs. And again, glucagon also activates the beta oxidation, but now the beta oxidation occurs to create these reduced cofactors to fuel the electron transport chain to create ATP to fuel gluconeogenesis. So that's why when that's the context of when we do beta oxidation. We we burn these fats and go through beta oxidation to create ATP to fuel gluconeogenesis to biosynthesize glucose molecules so we can dump it into the bloodstream to keep the brain happy.